Hey, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to another tutorial on Devstar. So in this tutorial, I am willing and having to make a full PHP crash course. Alright, so this tutorial is going to be covering PHP crash course. Alright, so if you are new to be new to PHP and you want to get started, you know, just follow this tutorial. Or if you know PHP and you want to extend some of your knowledge, you can just know go ahead and watch this video. Alright, so if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe bell, uh, button here, hit the notification bell, and do go to watch our other videos. Alright, so thank you. So now let's get started. So now to get started with um, PHP, we need to download some things. Alright, so I'm going to be opening it. The first thing we need to download in this case is called Visual Studio Code. That's what we're using our code. I'm using as our code editor in this case. So in this case, we have to download Visual Studio Code, All right? So just go ahead and download that. So open that. Next, we need to do is download XAMPP. So let's just go ahead and click on that too. So this is Visual Studio Code here. So just go ahead and click on the download button. So this will redirect you to the download page. All right? This XAMPP here. Same way here. Click on the download button. All right? So this will load you to the download page also. So both of them are loading so basically visual studio code allows us to write our code and this exam allows us to run our php code because php is a server side language you can't just run it like a regular html or javascript kind of stuff you need a server to process it before running it all right beautiful so this is the download page so if you're using windows just click here using Linux, click here using mac just go ahead and click here. So I have that downloaded on my already. So basically, this is my own here. So I don't need it. So go ahead and download the exam. So if you're using Windows, click. Make sure you download version 8.0.6. That is what I'm using. So you download 9 not so download for your Mac. All right. So once that is downloaded already, let's dive into it. I'm glad you make it to the second part of this video. Beautiful. Now, you can see I have my Visual Studio code opened already. So go ahead and open that and also make sure you have your exam open already so now first we need to do is just let's go ahead and click on start apache here so we're gonna be working with this x later this is a sql later but you know what let's first look at the apache so next you have to do just click on the admin button and it's gonna load up the uh, exam default page right so this is the exam default page now, if I want to check the PHP version, it is written here, but I can also check the information in this place. Where I can see everything you need here. Yeah. You can see build date was April 20. That was exactly last month. All right, beautiful. So we have that installed already. So now we need to make some configuration to our Visual Studio code. So in case you want to start using the HTML tag. You need to add some autocomplete features so that when I use it in two I see I'm making magic magic in this place. So let's just go to the settings here. Right, then we search for emit. Right, so we'll just go down here and everything concerning emit just check, check, and check, check, check. So this is gonna let us work with shorthand codes when writing HTML tags. Alright, so next we need to just Go to the extension place or you just hit control shift x so it's gonna open this place then i want you to install php all right so install php i don't know why okay my network isn't that good here okay so just go ahead and install php i have it installed already so this is it here so this php intelligence i don't know if i pronounce this word but just go ahead and install this so you're gonna be using this for the php to be able to you know code php very well and faster good so first two minutes it is to guess that is let's click on this open the folder so normally we don't have a folder already so go to where you stored where you saved your exam so i saved mine in the user slash um i saved mine in the local disks yeah normally this is where it's supposed to be saved by default unless you change your routes directly so exam is here so let's go to the HD docs folder here. So this is where our stuff is gonna be running from. So we just have to create a new folder. So I'm going to name it my PHP. Alright, so this is where all our files gonna be. So select the folder and you can see 
we have it opened already so now navigate to the browser and head over to my php folder that you created you can see we have an empty folder beautiful you've just set up your environment next we are gonna learn how to write our first hello word in php hey bro you know what welcome to the next part i'm so happy you made it for this part beautiful so now what i said what we are gonna do is what create our first hello world program so every program language we learned we built our first hello world program so no let us do that right now so what about your visual studio code in this place let's create a new file now our server when you are hosting or you are running locally what our server detects first as our first page is all is what we call the index page so anything that's how where the index is what our server is going to load if it's index of html index of php that will be the first thing it is going to load so because this please this tutorial is going to be um gradual process we are going to be creating folders folders that we hold each tutorials each section and so the first thing you have to do is just create a folder called basics so this basis is going to hold the hello world the variables the if statements then we now i will not have another folder called the project so that project is going to undo our to-do list and our block system all right so inside the basics folder right here so we can just go ahead and click new file you can see make sure you have this selected already click new file but before we do that let's go out to our server you can see we reload now now you have the basics folder here. if i click on it it's empty right let's go back create a new file and this is going to be index.php it's enter now if i should go back to the browser you can see this place is empty where i should reload guess what now it is loading the index page yeah the index page will be the person is going to load if the index page is not in there let's say it's rubbish like this then go back and reload you can see it's not working unless we click on this navigate to that directory all right so let's go back and return this to index beautiful now to create our first hello world program in php we use a statement called echo so now echo isn't the only way we use to print hello world in php there are other other ways but the most used here is where we use what echo so to do that we just have to eat you know php sorry php you can see why i said we should install intel um that php extension i mean so we can go ahead and do echo hello world all right so now you have to go ahead and save this i have my auto save drawn open already so you can just go ahead here and click on this auto save to save it automatically all right now you can see we have hello world if i should check the source code of this you can see it's just the basic hello world now in our echo folder sorry in our uh, php scripts i can add in some html attributes with it so let's go ahead and add an h1 tag to this place don't forget to close it here but you see it's already saved already so let's reload this so you can see we have it here already so if i should check this you can see we have our basic html code in this place so this is what beautiful you know what just give yourself a round of applause you just made your first php program all right oh, bro welcome or uh, what's up sis if you are he or she just welcome good afternoon good evening whatever time is it in that place now i'm happy you made it to this section now we're gonna be looking at variables in php all right Viola. So variables in php so basically in a lemma language i can see variables are just where you store information local place to store information so basically if i'm making you confused let's take a look at google and just search for variables definition all right let's wait for this to load up you can see a variable not consistent of having a fixed pattern uh, no able to change or, or being adapted exactly so a variable normally is where we store information and the information can change can adapt to whatever if i should give a variable the value of five i can change it to the value of ten in the future it's just a local storage where we can you know maybe we can uh change some stuff save it to reference you understand what i'm saying 
so good so we are here already we are not going to be making use of this this um index of php again so we'll make use of the um creating new file here so this new file is going to be variable variable.php beautiful now let's look at that now you know this index is the already so the index in the first thing is loading so we can't see the directory so what we have to do is just head over here and do variable.php sorry variable.php right so we are there already now to create a variable in php we have to make use of the dollar sign yo the dollar sign example i mean something like this so let's open our php tag now it's not much to close your php tags using this because if it's a php script you're writing just leave it like that and just open your tag there's nothing wrong with that all right so to create a variable you have to use the dollar tag so this is a dollar tag here so what i'm doing is i'm preparing to create a variable so now to create the variable we have to pass in the variable name so the variable name is let's say i'm using something called name then that name will not assign it to the data we want it to hold so i'm going to be assigning dev star to it beautiful so you just created a first variable now let's check into the browser oh sorry what happened this is not working yeah because we forgot to echo out our variable so basically this saves us the stress of doing their stack this is as you say we can just go ahead and do echo name as simple as abc so that you go there you can see we have dev stack it is pointed out beautifully now a variable can either be a a string an integer a float a bowling or a chart that is the character so we are going to be looking at that so we've just covered the string so this is the string here now let's cover the integer so i'm just going to move this one down right here so you know you can drag it and come right here save this beautiful now let's look at the integer so integer now i can go ahead and do number equals to five then now we can do echo number if i should go back and refresh you can see, you can see we have number so how can we check if this is actually number i think there's something you call i, I think i remember there's something you call type of in php is so type of okay type all right so this is not it okay so let's just you know refer to the google type of php all right so okay we have the get type so, all right so we have the get type get type so we can just go ahead and put this like this get type sorry okay let's save this now and let's head over here you can see this is giving us an integer telling us it is an integer beautiful so we also have a float a float basically is just a decimal number let's get a variable called float it is gonna be 1.5 so i can go ahead and get the type of this float and refresh you can see it has a double so a double is also a decimal or a floating number so we also have bowling. The bowling is can either be I can be true or false. So let's just try the let's try the true or false. Let's just try the true only. True. So I can go ahead and change this to bold, refresh. Now you can see we have a bowling. Then lastly we have a chai. A chai is just a single character. So I can do a equals to a. Okay, all right beautiful so i can just go ahead and press in you know, refresh and you can see we have a string all right so this is written as a string so basically we don't need to call this anything but basically we just have to know this so i knew that so that's why i was just referring back to it all right so beautiful now let's try something weird now what if i try to do this 
equals to a and let's see what will happen so if i refresh this now you can see undefined constant a so a is not defined is because it's not a number you can notice that once it's a string we add a single quote or a double quote meaning i can add a double quote here by saying yes don't forget to put your screen colon refresh you can see that is a string i can use the double code now don't forget that to end our statement in php you have to add the semicolon so the semicolon let us end our program in php beautiful so you just left the basics of variables in php now you're looking at the conditional statement guess who made it to the next tutorial beautiful all right so now we are going to be looking at the if uh, conditional statement so the first we are going to be looking at here is the if else so we're going to create a folder here and call this conditions conditions dot php all right so beautiful so let's just head over here and do conditions dot php all right so it is loaded up now the first condition we are going to be looking at is the if else statement if else statement now you can notice that i am doing some false slash so those two first slash are called comments so they are parts of code that cannot be run that we cannot run using using anything if we put it we cannot run it so we have this single line comment we also have this type of single line comment we also have multi-line comments so that is just this so i can keep on writing so keep on writing then you can see so we have multi-line comments so i skip that i don't know why but now you know it so looking at if else statement so to create a difference man, let's go ahead and do php then if so that's an if if five is less than ten i want you to echo less than all right so beautiful so this is saying if five is less than ten echo less than basically we all did mathematics in school and we know five is less than this so we know the expected result in this place which is less than so let's try it reload now you can see we have less than all right you can see our our comment is showing right there yeah because our comment needs to be in the code we are running all right so just add it here okay refresh right you can see we have less than because five is actually less than that 10 it's less than what 10 now this is how we add code it that we just added it now we can also make conditional images in variables i can use a equals to five then i can do if that a is less than 10 echo five less than five you can see it is less than same way we can also do for b which is 10 then i can turn this to b you can see it's the same result now we just finished the if statements we also have something called else so that else is like if their condition isn't meant i want you to now run this command so we cannot do echo we can do echo greater down beautiful now normally now we are not going to get a greater than because five is less than 10 normal so let's turn this to greater than let's rerun this and run this now you can see greater than now five is greater than 10 no so it's returning what what a greater than 10 or 10 is greater than it but that doesn't make right good english right so let's just turn this to b and this to a so let's refresh now you can see i have greater than so we are saying if 10 is less than five less than less than five greater than and 10 is not less than five so it's giving us a greater down beautiful then we have something we call else if that is multi conditional statement beautiful so the body conditional statement is just like saying if a is that do this else if b is that do this so now we can do if a is less than four we want you to echo yes then i can go ahead and do else if so else if another statement a is greater than 10 
I want it to echo maybe then lastly else so to stop it we also have else to echo no so now let's guess the output from this piece we are saying if five is less than four echo yes five is less than four so it's not gonna run this now else if five is greater than ten five is not only greater than ten so it's not gonna run this else no so we have the guess that it's going to be running the no so let's go back and run this so you can see we have no so this is taking this let's just add a break here echo br all right so refresh now you can see we have no beautiful now let's meet the conditions here so i can instead of using that else at the last time we can go to else if a now we have equals to operate, operator here so we have operators this is the less than this is le greater than and this is the equals to so we have uh we have the way we can check if two values are the same things the same thing so to do that we have to use a double equals to sign so that is equal equals to five so this is just saying i want you to check if a is actually five and save but should we run this now you can see we see uh, we are what no because a equals what five so we can just come here and put five refresh we have five because five is equals to five beautiful so you just convert the basics of the efl statement in php next we are going to be looking at the loops so we are going to be going through four loops while and while loop all right so we we'll see you next day welcome to the loops all right so i just copied this i want you to take a look at this so you know let's delete this and do php now let's comment this multi nine comments i did printed the file called loops.php so go ahead and do so so i have this then comment this so now let's navigate to that place loops not php all right so we have that open now we are looking at the while loop so while loop is why condition is true i want you to run this code so an example of that is just going ahead and writing creating a variable called x assign it to the value of one then we can go below and do y that x is less than or equals to five then i need you to just x plus plus so now let me explain what is this is we created the variable called x assigned to the value one then we said if one is less than or equals to five once you are doing this kind of comparison you need to make use of this two double comparison which is less than or equals to or with an unknown equals to anyone you want to use or double equals to so if you use only this one it's going to check if only it's less than but if five is equals to five it's not going to you know there's going to be some break there so you have to use this double comparison and after that is compared we have to what x plus plus so that is incrementing that is just saying this one value plus one plus one plus one plus one exactly so just save this and now let's try this out so i'm reloading this now nothing is working because we forgot to echo so let's save this and load now you can see we have one two five so that is it here but if i change this to 10 we should be probably having one two ten so the while loop is as simple as abc there's no big deal in it it's just so simple just so simple right so next one we're looking at is a for loop okay now so i have a snippet here we are going to be looking through so that is for integer to counter then the test and the increments we are going to be doing so that is just to do for so let's create a variable here b equals to zero hold on you can see i'm following this corner we have the we have to compare the comparison you can do b with less than or equals to 10 again hold on then our increment that will be b b plus plus then i can go ahead and do echo the number is so to con uh, to add and um, string plus be able to get we use the dot so i'm gonna use the dot in this case size dot b all right so we have this already so let's just go back there and refresh this all right so the number is zero one 
and so on and so forth. Now you can see I made reference to this place. So if in case you want to know where I got that from, so this is it here. I think that has better explanation. So this is it here. So you can see we have the number is zero one. So let's just add some break to it. So I can go ahead and do this again. Then break. Beautiful. So let's refresh this. Now you can see we have zero to ten. So this is a for loop in PHP. So now we've covered the loops. There's also a loop called for each. So that is gonna just gonna happen when we have an array. So we don't have an array now. We're treating an array in the next video. So we are also gonna be looking through it. So let's go. Let's take a look at arrays in PHP. So to do that, let's create a normal file as usual. It'll be arrays.php. So let's load that up in this place. Arrays.php. Sorry, a beautiful so now to create an array we have to use just like creating a variable so i'm going to put variable data sorry don't forget to also start with this then variable data equals to now we can go ahead and get our, our array normally to create an array before we use these brackets so now since the latest updates i think this is what everybody uses now so now to create an array i'm gonna put name equals to dev stack then age so we don't use normal equals so we use that equals to greater than but that is just like assigning the value to it so that is going to be equals to is it is a is an integer string so i can do job is a web Web developer, beautiful. So now let's check this in the browser. Whoa, what happened? We need to echo out our data. But is that the right way? But let's try it first. Let's echo out our data. Echo data. Let's refresh. Now you can see one array to string conversion. Array to string conversion. So now that because we are trying to echo an array as a string. We are trying to echo an array as a string so the better way to solve this is just let's get the index so we can just go ahead and do the index here name all right beautiful so we can refresh this now you can see i have depth stack in this place so let's just go ahead and copy this and paste two times i have my age and i have the job so now we can just you know go ahead and do a break so let's just copy this paste it here to refresh now you can see dev stack is a web developer now you know last time i told you we can loop through these arrays to loop this array we have to use that in i mentioned last video called for each so basically before we look to this one let's create a simple v is a simple array so this is going to be new array so to create that also just have to do a normal thing like this then so we're giving it this area is called the multi-dimensional array so we are i forgot to explain that we just head over here and just create another array so this is going to be dev stack this is 18 web developer beautiful now to do this array we can just go ahead and do for each new now for each new array as as data so echo so we are replacing this array and with this data so that is just how we look for each using array so we can do data all right so let's save this and go back here Refresh and you can see we have this. So you now let's try and add the break to this. So this is gonna be dot br save right so beautiful. So now we have this already. Now if you want to use that same approach for the one above, it's not gonna work. So let's just try it for each. So that data as new. So now let's do let's do echo new. 
su su data so let's just request this like you can see for each admin must be a type of array or uh, object so i don't know why it's showing that error let me just put this right up here all right good so it's not showing error now you can see we were able to loop through this data good so it was not supposed to show that now we were able to look through this data and this is our our data here i think okay so that is weird enough so let's just be on echo b i'm sorry all right refresh okay so this is it here let's start getting web developer so now we are actually looking through this data as new so it is working so there's also way we can just bring this one out because this one together so that is for each data as then i can do from equals to sorry not equals to then this all right beautiful so if i should do this we still have that then i can go ahead and do something like echo the echo the from so that we dot I want to pass in an equals to sign equals to and dot then don't forget to add our br beautiful so let's just save this and look i can see name is dev start page is 18 and job is a web developer so basically that's how we look through our is the php so next thing we're going to be looking at is um I think we've covered all the basics there so if there's any basics you're gonna see in the next video take a look at what we call switch in php the switch just is a better way of instead of using um if a statement you can go ahead and use the switch so we click now i created a file called switch.php so i have already copied the syntax from w3 schools again so just lazy it here you can go ahead and make reference to that too beautiful so let's open that in our browser so that will be switch.php good so now you can say this is a switch statement accepting a parameter here so if that case one equals to the parameter here we want you to show this break the same thing for the two and so on then this default is basically the one that renders if the first if the cases you provide provided above are not corresponding right beautiful so let's go ahead and create a name variable equals to dev stack. All right, now we can go ahead and do switch. So we are switching for that name. We want to confirm the name. Then we can go ahead and do case. Case, then I can do precious here. So that's my name. So I can do uh, echo. Yes. Break. You can go ahead and do case team echo no then break again so we need the break to be able to break our uh, arm um, to stop our code from executing so we also have case now let's try the case default no there's no case for default it's just just default so that default is going to be sorry let's just do echo the default oh sorry okay good now this is going to give us an error yeah this is going to give us the default because none of them is matching so let, let's try this first because i think i'm expecting an error in this place okay we have yes so basically this is how we do it what i was expecting you can say that this piece has colon so that means is the colon is not a must so this i'll just do normal switch cases now i've showed you the first one if this one doesn't matches you can see we have the default but if any of them should be done later match you can see we have it if it is team that was here we should be having team in that place 
right so this is how we do switch cases in php now welcome to the last part in this basics tutorial so basically i've thought of doing something like this so this is what you're gonna be doing so i'm just gonna upload this part to the video the basic section to the video so basically if you guys are interested in learning the total list tab and the blog so i'm just gonna make them two, two different crash courses on php up here that's what i'm saying so if you're interested just comment below and tell me then i'm gonna make go ahead and make the video and upload it i don't want this video to be too much so you understand what i'm saying so basically that was right so the last part i'm looking at here is all the function so now we are almost we are even through with the basics of php so now let's go ahead and create a function in php so to create a function we use the function keyword so function hello so we created a function called hello don't forget to add your parentheses then i can go ahead and do return hello so let's save this now let's go back to this place now move this to hello okay sorry not hello function good so this is it here. we are returning hello now you can see nothing here is happening because we didn't return our hello so we have to just put back our hello in this place then refresh uh sorry we have to make this echo hello now you can see we have hello here in the screen so this is how we create basic function in php so now let's go ahead and pass in parameters to this so let's do this name now you can see we have real error saying on cut argument control so two few arguments function is zero passed in and is expecting one one is expected so that is to say we can just go ahead here and pass in precious but should we load now you can see this still does nothing so now to do that to achieve that we just have to come here and do dot the name so I save this and this name you can see we have hello pressure i'm just gonna add a space to this place so save that now you can see we have hello pressures so we just created our first function and that is beautiful so we can go also um enable mathematical operator here so i can do add that i can do a and b so we want you to be able to add two data together so i can do return a plus b so down here i can just go ahead and do echo add so inside the add i'm going to do five you can see here it's highlighting it's five and five you can just close this go back to fresh now you can see we have ten so that is how we just you know, work with functions right so in the tutorial the future tutorial of the blog we're gonna learn how to work with function in lots we're gonna be using it and the to-do list also so basically this is the last part of the video and i'm glad you enjoyed watching this video if you do please don't forget to hit the subscribe button thank you see you next time for watching peace